Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at something super cool, 3D printed nails. Shout out to Nailed It Rachel who showed me these via DM. Once I saw them, I knew I had to get them and try them. They are so cool looking and I have really, really high hopes for them. So these nails are called Nail 3D by Coco and it seems like a fairly new business. I have personally never seen any 3D nail tips or anything like this before, so I was super excited to try these out. So I ordered three different kinds. So let's just go through each different style, I guess. This is a Canadian company, so they do their sizing by millimeters, and I personally have never worked with nail tips that are sized like that, so that'll be a learning experience today. But here they are. These are the mermaid style, and they are like actually 3D. So they do have texture on them, which is the cool part about these essentially. They are not too thick, they seem very, very strong. It seems like if you wanted to bend these, you maybe could, but they are fairly hard, harder than most normal nail tips. It says that the nails are actually made of high impact resin. So I'm not exactly sure what that is. I'm not really familiar with 3D printing and what exactly is used. It says that they can be soaked off, but they won't melt like a normal nail tip will or like acrylic will, but that it should soften enough to pop off or file. I know with a lot of resin, including nail resin, you need to be really careful with filing and having that dust. So because this isn't even normal nail resin, I would definitely suggest if you do file these to be super careful and wear a mask. One of the good ones, like one of the N95s that actually like, you know, like to your face. Says they can last about three weeks with good care and can be adhered using nail glue or gels or whatever you would normally use. So that is actually the mermaid style and I actually got two more that I think are even cooler. I am really excited about these ones and the next one. These ones are so cool and I probably won't use the mermaid ones today. We'll see. I'm definitely going to be using these ones. Look at, they're like skulls, but look at that. Isn't that so cool? I might pop in some like B-roll from my good lens that I use sometimes, but it is really cool. And again, they are all 3D, so you can definitely like feel the texture. And I just think that is so cool. You can color them however you want, super customizable. When I was buying them, I did notice that the brand name was right here. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'd want that on each nail, but it's actually on the inside, which is actually really cool. So that's a really cool touch. These are just the skull tips. So these ones are super cool. Love these ones, really excited to use them. And then we have one more style that I got. There are a couple other styles on the site. They have ones with like waves, like a prismatic kind of one. Medallions, which I actually think, oops, that was what I got, not the mermaid. I got medallions and dragon scale ones. These next ones I think are by far the coolest. So these are some dragon ones. So it has like little 3D scales and a little place with an indentation to do an eye, which I think would be really fun. You can like customize the eyes and make eyes and then all other like little texture for the skin here. This one I think would be my favorite so far. I think it's really cool. It's kind of hard to see a little bit when nothing is on them. And I think it's actually a little bit harder to see in the camera, but in person you can definitely differentiate. I don't know how this would exactly feel poking someone, like just having all of these on your nails. I don't know if they'd catch on things, but we'll find out. I'm gonna pull out one size from a whole set and we will just see the size range for these. I don't know if they run big or small or maybe they run just right. They do come with 11 sizes and each one of these was about 40 US dollars, which I kind of thought was a little expensive for tips, but gel tips in general can cost about that same. And this is like a new thing, a small business. So I actually think that's perfectly fine. Oh my gosh, okay. So I, for some reason, thought all of the nail tips would be like this, but actually it seems like the thumb pieces are a little bit different where the whole nail is like just these little spikes sort of thing. I just had assumed they would all be the exact same. I actually really like that though. I think that's cool that they are a little different. I'm gonna be honest, I did not necessarily look and read the whole thing. I just kind of was like, ooh, really cool, bye. You know how it goes. So those are 170. 
for the size. Once again, I've never sized things like this, so I'm not exactly sure. They also look a little different. Like these ones are a lot more clear than these ones. So I'm not sure how that goes. This one looks a lot more clear than these ones. I don't know if they maybe changed like what they were using. I would absolutely definitely prefer these ones. These ones are clear. These ones are definitely not like clear. I would say it's more of like a natural color, you know? Now we're down to the size 150 and these look even a little bit more different. No place for an eye and there's some little spikes on the side. So from what I'm gathering, it seems like it's like a whole cohesive set where one or two nails would be the eye and the rest would just be scales, but they are all pretty different for what are supposed to be on different fingers. That's 150, a bit smaller. And this one also has them down the center only, and that's a 110. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Online, on their pictures from what I can see, it definitely looks like they are a lot more clear than these ones, but that may have just been a recent change. I got these November 15th, so I know we're going into December. Right now, these are 100. This one has just a little couple scales, not much, 20. The 80 size has one just with a couple spikes. They are a bit pokey for some of these. If you lived in the desert, it feels like a goat head if you've ever felt one of those. That's what it feels like. I'd imagine like stepping on one of these would hurt. Okay, so this other size, this is a 90 and this one also does have a place for an eye. And then there we go. I think that's all of them. Alrighty, so this is the range for the sizes. I do have nails on. I'm gonna have to take them off before we get on this. Instead of going straight into putting these on my nails, I do want to just decorate some using little tip stands. I think that'll be a bit easier. These, if you wanted to adhere them with gel, I think that'd be totally fine. But I think with this sort of thing, if you're wanting to get more detailed, definitely be better for tip stands. So I'm gonna get that and grab some stuff to decorate and let's get on it. So I have a tip on a stand. Now let's just get at it, I guess. I like don't even know where to start. Okay, so I feel like, I don't know how easy or hard it's going to be to paint these. I just kind of want to go in with some black right off the bat. Don't know if that's going to be a good or bad idea, but let's just try and see how it does with just like a regular brush. Obviously because it is 3D, you know, there's going to be different heights and stuff. It seems like you kind of have to do the brush. It's almost like circular motions, but that's okay. Other than that, it is going on just fine. It's not gonna be like a quick, you know, just paint and go sort of thing. Quicker than sculpting all of this out for sure. Alrighty, so I think that covers all of the crevices. I didn't wanna put it on the eye so I can do like a different color on it. Everything kinda does settle down into the crevices so it keeps its like 3D shape. I'm gonna just cure this really quickly. Brought back out my little mini McCart lamp for this. It's been a while since I've used this. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go with like a blue, green sort of oil slick kind of effect. So I'm gonna grab some blue powder for this. Pretty, I think this might be like a blue hollow one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I did not feel like dealing with this today. And I'm just gonna do this on like the tips of them. Cool. And then for everything else, I can kind of just like rub it lightly on top and it should only catch like the little tops of it, I think anyway. Okay, even though it's not perfect, I still like it. It still looks cool. I'm just gonna pull out a detail brush at this point so we can start getting like in there. I'm gonna use one of these little reflective gels, what I have on my nails right now from Ellen Nailed It. And we will just try to do a little bit of like maybe some details on the scales and horns. I feel like I need like a magnifying sort of thing though. You know what I mean? Just something you can put here and it's just like, maybe I should get one of those, honestly. You guys are like, Emily, you mean your glasses? Yes, but I can't wear them when I wear lashes. Okay, so there's with some extra green on it. I'm gonna try something with the eye. So I'm gonna do the white down here. I'm not gonna lie, being precise with this is actually really, really hard. Let me show you guys what I just did. I was trying to close it and it slipped. And then I also, then the top fell down there into there. We'll just take a moment. I'm just going to put something over this and pretend it didn't happen for now. Okay, I got a little bit of texture because I put it on for a second and then took it off. I'm just gonna fix that very quickly. For this, 
Ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make eyes look realistic. It's like, do I paint underneath or over? I think I'm gonna paint underneath. Okay, we probably do the darker color first. Did I not do any nail art for a couple weeks and any skills I had retained just like fly out the window? Cause I feel like that's what's happening. I feel like this is like one of those things where you can keep going and just trying to like perfect it more and more and more. But at some point you just have to kind of stop. I'm gonna try to build up a little bit of the yellow. So it's like a really intense eye. Although this yellow, ooh, it's like a neon like fluorescent. Oh no. Uh oh, okay, I Googled dragon eyes and apparently the whole thing is usually colored. Now this is probably gonna be the hard part though. And then I'm actually gonna go and fill in around these a little bit more since it's usually almost the whole eye. I think that still looks actually pretty good. Damn, these nails are labor intensive. I kind of almost felt like because they already had like the design in them, it wasn't gonna take super long, but it's taking quite a while. So we have that now and that looks pretty good, but I'm just going to add some gel over the eye so we can maybe, if we can, I don't know if we'll be able to get it like a little bit of a like roundness sort of to it. Kind of like that, but smoother. Okay, I'm gonna let it just sort of settle for a minute and then I'm gonna turn it upside down. There you go, see it has a little bit of a bulge on its eye. I actually think it looks like really, really cool though. So now we will top coat it. I think I'm gonna do, in general, it matte, but the eye glossy, I think that'll give it like a really cool effect. Then just a little. Okay, I'll be honest. It does not look as good matte as I thought it would. It looks okay. Just then with like the shiny eye, it looks okay. It definitely did look better shiny. So this may or may not be a good idea. I don't know why I always feel like I have to try the absolute most, but I have a airbrush actually. And I think that these types of nails would be absolutely perfect for it. Even to only do like the base for them just because I don't know, I feel like they take so much time. I have a nail airbrush that I got from Ellen Nailed It, and I think it's just like a regular airbrush that I can use with paints. I know that the way that she does it is she dilutes gel polish with acetone, but I've been told not to do that when I mentioned I had one the other day. So I'm gonna just try it with some acrylic paint and we'll see how it goes. I've never used an airbrush before, so this is gonna be the first time I've never even taken it out of the box. So let's try. Here it is. Cool, I think. Hopefully it doesn't need to be charged. I think this is probably just fairly self-explanatory with just pushing this in. And actually, you know what? I have used an airbrush before, but it was for makeup. Definitely not for nails. <gasps> okay, it's on. It works, I think. Let's just mix some green paint. Always dilute with water. One part flow aid to 20 parts water. Okay. okay, let's get to mixing. So I have water here. So it's one part water, or no, nope. Mm. So 20 parts water. Mm. I probably need a little bit more than that. Right, is that enough? I don't know. So it would just be one, two, three drops of the flow additive. So I chose this lovely lime green color. Why not? I'm on a green, obviously on a green kick today. Can you tell? And I'm not sure how much paint. Don't add more than 25% by volume or mix with other additives. Okay. Now I'm not saying this is great quality acrylic paint. I got it from Target on sale. I saw it on sale. Did I need paint? No, I'm sure I'll use it at some point and I am. So it was a good decision. One hour between coats. We don't have that kind of time. Okay, so I have this with all of my additive and stuff. So I'm just going to add, I guess, some paint and try to dilute it until it looks like, you know, good. And this additive mixture is only supposed to be 25% of it. So I feel like this acrylic paint is already pretty liquidy. How bright it is though, very cool. I have a couple of these on a little stand. I went with three of the dragon ones, this one, this one, this one, and then this is a gold one, if you can see, and then a medallion one. Hopefully we should be able to see that. I'm gonna grab, okay, so we know the airbrush turns on. I don't think it needs to be charged at this moment. What exactly this piece does, I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to add some of our liquid. I think that would probably be good. And then I can turn it on. And then do I, 
Oh, it is doing it. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Okay, I thought it wasn't doing anything, but it was. I just wasn't able to see it um, wherever I was spraying. It was working. I need to put a little bit more in there, I think. You gotta be careful with not tilting it though. That's on me. Let's see if we can do this. So that was an experience. So let's just look at what came out of that. So I don't know if just the paint doesn't want to stick to this or what, but it basically all just kind of settles. It could be that my mixture was too liquidy. That's definitely something that's gonna require practice. Hold the phone. I have something that's actually meant for acrylic paint, a canvas. Let's try again. I'm not talking while this is going on because it's actually pretty loud. It's on the canvas. That's it, I guess. I don't know. Um, hmm. I need to search and see if there's anything I can really use. So it could have been that I just thinned it out too much. So I'm gonna just do another try, but I won't make you guys watch the whole time. So I'll be back in just a moment. Obviously I look different. It's a couple days later. I felt personally attacked that I was not able to get the airbrush to work and I really wanted to get it to work. So I ordered some and I waited and we got them. Editing Emily here. I feel like I should clarify that in the moment I didn't feel like the acrylic paint, the green, worked very well on the surface of the nail. It took a lot to get much coverage. And on the surface, it kind of just looked like droplets, not like an even spray. It looks a lot better on camera though. And it took a really, really long time for it to dry and sort of even out. So I probably was fine with the acrylic and I could have gotten it to work, but I really just wanted to do it like right. Okay, bye. <laughs> I got some proper airbrush inks or paints or whatever they technically are. I saw pictures of nails, airbrushed ones in the product reviews and they looked good. So I have hopes for these. I was about to say like, and they better work because they weren't cheap, but honestly, I mean, as long as they work, we're good because I got a lot of shades, like 30 shades. We can do a lot with this. So I was going to do this set. I'm going to do a whole hand of the skulls. I was going to do them black, like for the underneath. I feel like that's very predictable. So I wanna do something fun with the airbrush if we can get it to work. Maybe we could do a cotton candy skull moment. Let's try that. Let's do the blue first. I really like this blue. It's like a, like a powder blue. And then I got the airbrush back out. Okay, we can do it. I cleaned it last time and I think I cleaned it pretty well. I wanted to make sure. Okay, so apparently it's supposed to be like three parts paint, one part water. So I'm gonna just do like one, two, three, four, four, five, six, that seems like enough. Okay, so I'd need 18 drops of this. Okay, I think that should be enough. Let's try it now. Can we do it? I hope so. It's working. It's very much um, like what technique because I have not done this before, but it, we got the airbrush to work. So I wonder how quick these paints dry. No information came with them at all. It just came in a package. That's it. I think I need to add even a little bit more water, honestly, because when I did the one part paint, three parts of water, it wouldn't go at all, it's too thick. Here we go. Look at that. Are we gonna be airbrush professionals by the end of this? I want it to dry. I don't know how long it takes to dry though. I guess we'll see. Nope, not dry yet. Oh, it's tacky now. Okay, I think we're getting some more. I'm gonna let it dry for like another minute or two. I'm really happy that I got this to work though. Airbrushing things is so fun. I swear I'm gonna get this to look good somehow. I'm gonna let this dry, do a couple more coats, and then it will be hopefully more opaque. Look at how good they turned out. I am so excited, I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot. I did ooh, maybe like seven coats, but it actually dried really quickly. I had like a little mini um, handheld fan that I held it on. It made it go so much quicker. I don't know if I'm gonna do any more airbrushing because cleaning it takes a long time, especially cause I don't wanna ruin it. So I like cleaned it thoroughly. And um, you have to do that after like every color, I think, unless you want the colors to mix or, you know. I think we're just going to work on the skulls now. They look a lot more crusty now that they're dry, but they look actually really even. I actually really got the hang of the airbrush towards the end. I think let's just try to paint the skulls. I still wanna do some sort of little cotton candy moment with them. So I'm gonna get out some white. And then this one, it's like a iridescent 
pink. It has like blue reflex. I think it'll go good with this. Let's see how this goes. I don't even know where to start, to be honest. I'm gonna start on the big one because I feel like that might be the easiest. I'm gonna start with like just a little brush and we can just start to paint. I don't know if the blue color will come off, if we have to seal it before, or if it's just pretty dry, you know? I don't know, but it doesn't seem like it's coming off or anything. I was originally going to try to adhere one set to my nails with gel and then just do one with nail glue. I felt like it was gonna be just extra hard for no reason to adhere these with gel. In the future, I will definitely try and see with, when I'm doing maybe like one with like one color or something, not when I'm like trying to airbrush and do the most. I'm nervous about these teeth down here. Okay, here we go. Here's some good progress. I'm getting all these little itty bitty nooks and crannies is so hard. And I'm trying to not flood the gel actually. Might look like I am a little bit, but it's hard to not have it just pool, especially since it's like gel and it's just gonna, you know, keep moving until I cure it. But also I don't wanna use like a thicker gel because otherwise we might lose some details. Cure this now. And I think we need to do another coat of the white. Looks like it's gonna have to be three coats. I think the ridges is really what makes it hard. I actually, I think already have a lot of thoughts for the, these nails. I think they are so cool, but they are not nearly as easy to work with as I thought they were gonna be. I thought it was gonna be, you know, you just like paint a little bit and you're done. But even painting them, it is actually quite difficult unless you're kind of doing one color. Cause if you're doing one color, it doesn't matter. But if you wanna try to do designs, it takes quite a lot of work and eye strain. All right, so we have that. I, ooh, I'm so torn on if I wanna just do this pink over the entire skull. I'm just gonna start at the top maybe. Okay, no, I'm doing it and I'm gonna call it Cotton Candy Skulls. Also, I almost contemplated not putting these on because I do have some other videos that I need to film. <laughs> but I really wanna see how these like fare on your hands. I will update in next videos because I think I'm gonna try to keep one set on and then also I can take you through the removal process. And I also just wanted to see again how they wear because they're actually really, really thick. And I noticed on the website, it did say that they're flexible and I don't really feel like they're flexible to be honest. Like they're pretty stiff more so than any other tip I've really tried, but I mean, they are 3D printed. I mean, like, like I totally get it. Like, I'm not mad about it. I just don't think they are flexible, really. So that's just my opinion. Do he kind of look like he's melting? Cotton candy skull. You know what? I actually kind of like it. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. I don't know why this exact skull makes me think of the taxi driver from Halloween Town. That's what it looks like to me. Something in me just really wants me to give them like some eyebrows and lashes. I won't, but what if? I mean, maybe I will. We'll see how I'm feeling towards the end. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a matte top coat for this actually, cause I don't know, I just feel like it looks good matte. I felt like the bottom did at least. Maybe the top will, maybe it won't. I don't know. Maybe we'll only have one set that's a winner, that being the other one. This one, you know, maybe not. Not everything can turn out perfect and that's okay. I feel like I get asked a lot why I don't do a lot of other people's nails. And honestly, I just feel like right now, at least I have way too much anxiety to do that. Like if I mess up my own nails, it's fine. They're mine. But if I mess up someone else's nails, I would not forgive myself. You know what I mean? Or if like, I don't know, like a set didn't come out right and someone paid me for it. I just wouldn't feel right. You know what I mean? So if I do them on myself and I mess up, at least we could all cumulatively learn from my mistakes at least a little bit i hope now that i have an airbrush and i know how to use it we're gonna get some like 90s sets going on you know we gotta do some brats nails or something okay i'm gonna cure this so the pink listen it don't look like pink it doesn't look normal on one hand it could be cotton candy on another hand we could have ripped like someone's skin off i need some time to think about what we're gonna do about that so let me do it to all of them because you know what? No, I'm not taking it off. I'm gonna do it to all of them. I don't know. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I did lose some of the features with having to put so many different coats of white on. This would be something I'd wanna experiment with a little bit. Definitely some thinner ultra pigmented gels would be best. Stuff probably like they have on the website that they do with their press on, sort of like this gold is obviously like super pigmented, maybe almost more like paint or something, you know? Maybe some gels that are like meant 
for drawing on nail art and stuff like that. Overall, I mean like if I kind of just like, you know, move them, you can sort of tell what they are. This one got real lost because I had to cover up that uh pink. I just cannot help myself. I just want to see what it would look like with eyebrows. Like I just, I just gotta know. Material girl. <laughs> Now the question is, can I do the other one the same? I don't know. These eyebrows are not even related. They're cousins now. We might have to just be good with that. Unfortunately, I don't have any concealer for them today. You know what these kind of look like though? Oni masks with the fangs. I bet you I could do a good one on one of these. This is something I feel like it would be fun to get these. Just sort of just like practice and just do different designs on. Sort of like fun nails. Not necessarily ones that you want to probably wear all the time. But just ones that just like, I don't know, just like have fun with. Then like paint. Or almost like a, like an art piece, if you will. I always say I'm going to do one thing. I need to stop that. I changed my mind so quickly. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to touch these up two seconds later touching them up like I don't know why I just like decisions I just can't I don't know they're not too bad everyone at this point is just like what am I watching I would also love to know eyeliner next shall we where exactly would the eyeliner go so it's the brow bone well nope I'm making a new face okay I realize I put the brows probably like would be like here but I'm gonna do it how I want also I know my real nails look so bad okay I know I haven't been feeling great, so that's my excuse. Okay, all right. Can we do it again? Probably not because this eye is lopsided. Maybe some bottom lashes. What if I created? Okay, let's try some lashes. They're a baddie, okay? I'm doing baddie makeup. All right, what are they wearing? Some Ardell Wispies? That's what they look like. David's gonna watch back this footage and be like, why is there four hours of footage for just these like... Honestly, this is scaring me a little bit. Next, we're gonna do some contour somewhere, somehow. Is this bronzer? Is this contour? I'm not 100% sure. Can't forget the nose. I'll blend it out, I promise. Can't forget that. By blending it, ooh, that just basically took it away. Just using some uh, alcohol. We want it to be subtle. Okay, I'm gonna put some of the bronzer contour back. We can't have them looking ghostly and pale. That would be just unacceptable. Oh wait, we can't forget the forehead. Beauty blender could never. And then last but not least, I don't know if we could put lipstick on them. Let's do some blush. I'll do blush. I suppose the cheek would technically be around here. We could give them like a e-girl look and take the blush up. Mm -hmm. No, amazing, 10 out of 10. Now, we cannot, cannot forget the highlight. Okay, so I've gotta put some highlight right here. Can you tell it has some glitter in it? You can see probably better on here. Got that, uh, what is it? Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonstone vibe. Cupid's bow underneath the brow. Amazing. My best work. Oh, my inner corner highlight. It's not going to get any better than this. We're just going to top coat it. You know, I'm going to do it matte, but then I'll go over with shiny for the highlight part. That's what I should do. I'm not going to decorate the rest of these. They're just, it is what it is. Okay, so we're going to move on to the other hand. So I've actually done some of the nails already because these take so long. <laughs> I'll just show you what we've got going on right now and my plans for this hand. So for the pinky, I have basically a sort of sunset vibe going on. This one's sort of like a mermaid scale. And then I did a nude on this one, which doesn't look quite as good. And then I am going to do this one with you guys and sort of share what I've learned about how to do these nails. And then for the thumb, we're going to do another one of the dragon nails because I felt like the first one didn't come out super well and I still wanted to incorporate the dragon one, but I also want to do the other ones. I guess that's the hard part when you get like three different kinds. We'll move on to doing this one. I'm not necessarily trying to make the set of them that cohesive. They're all going to be kind of like their own individual sort of piece. So I think for this one, I am going to use this glittery pink, this pink, black, and white. Also, quick side note, I need you guys to stop selling out this black and white set because I'm trying to get more because I'm almost out and I can't get more because they're sold out. Anyway, 
we'll get a palette going. Something I've noticed with at least the small detailed ones for these 3D ones is thicker gels work much, much better than thin ones. The thin ones or anything that kind of can't hold its own viscosity sort of just melts into other things and then it gets sort of thin on the ridges. You know exactly what I mean. These nail liners from Macar are extremely thick. I'll show you. Like they are very, very thick and they don't really spread out if you put them down, you know what I mean? Like you have a while before it sort of flattens. For this nude nail, I used mostly Femi's gels and these ones are a bit thinner on the thinner side so that's why I feel like it didn't look so good on this one. This type of nail just really requires thick gel. And as you guys can see, I've sort of switched my look so I can wear my glasses. I absolutely have to wear my glasses for these. When I was doing them without, it was extremely hard and I can see pretty much normally except for those little fine details. I think that if this was a different color, maybe not clear, it might be easier. So it definitely might be easier to just do a base of like white or another color that you're planning on using because the clear is extremely hard to see. Next, you're gonna wanna use some very, very fine tip brushes with these. I will link my favorite detail brushes down below because I definitely have a strong opinion on that. I like the ones from Glitter Planet, love them. I also love the ones from Enel Couture. This one is on its last leg. I have another one I'm gonna get, but I've been using this one for a really, really long time and at first I wasn't taking care of it, which is why it's kind of like Neh. And then I will link a more affordable version of those down below also. So we will work on this now. This nail might not turn out quite as well as the other ones because I'm trying to, you know, keep it in focus and stuff. I told David, I was like, I need like a magnifying stuff, something like, um, like a watchmaker or a jewelry maker would use something that I can just like clip on here, put it here so I can like, you know, be in frame for everything and not have to put my face super close to it. So I'm gonna work on getting something like that. But for now, we're just gonna have to do just this with it. I would say each of the nails so far in this set, the three that I already did, probably took easily 45 minutes each. I'm sure if you're just doing one or two colors, it wouldn't take nearly as much time, but these are not going to be quick nails. This is if you wanna spend some time, you know? They are also kind of hard to clean up because there's just so many little crevices. So even if you are trying to clean up where you've put some gel, it just gets really hard to get into the little nooks and crannies. Like in some of them, it's almost impossible, it feels like. So I try to be really careful with where I'm placing them. I believe that this liner gel specifically from McCart's, I don't know exactly which ones these were from. I think these were like maybe the Halloween ones. I don't know. These ones are reflective. So that's probably why it looks so extra shiny in the camera. I think they're reflective anyway. Okay, so here is our first coat of the first layer. So I've been doing about two coats per layer. So I'm gonna cure this and then just do a little bit more on top, especially for the glitter ones that are a little bit more sheer. And then a touch up second coat. You guys can very much see why I did a couple of these off camera. And here's our second coat. So for the next layer, I'm gonna use the white. This is where it gets hard. The first layer for these, not that bad. This one, it's honestly pretty hard. Again, maybe if it was magnified, it could be easier. Were these tips intended to be filled in little line by line? I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. All right, so that's the first coat. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. So I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. I know it looks a mess right now, but trust the process. I'm gonna go in with black now, and I'm gonna try to be really careful with this because, I mean, there's not much you can do if you mess up the black part. It's just so hard. So I'm gonna do my best. So I've cured this and it is looking a little messy, but it'll come together. I do kind of do a lot of touching up unless you have the most steady hand and the best eyes ever. There's not really any way to avoid touching this up. Listen, if you were screaming that I forgot a spot, I heard you, okay? I got you. I'm gonna go in with this pink now. This pink is super thick, so it is easier to do this opposed to the black and white, because these ones are meant for like lines, probably why they're called liners. Mm -hmm. 
So this is how it's gonna look for the most part, but I'm just going to go and touch up anything that seems sort of off. I feel like if you kind of just like move it, it looks great. But if you look, you know, really close up, you can sort of see some of the uh, detail issues. So I'm just gonna go in and try to just touch up everything, you know, just make it a little bit more refined, look a little bit nicer. It's kind of hard because there's like ridges on these. You have to almost get it like underneath on the side. And those are also hard to get without getting anything on the other colors. So here's the finished nail. I'm gonna put a top coat on now. I'm using this Cure Sky top coat because it's really, really thin and so it won't like bulk up any of our 3D-ness of the nail. And for these, I'm kind of painting one way down and then also going the other way. Then back to just try to get off any excess. So I'm gonna set that into cure. And now let's work on the dragon nail. So this is one that we did earlier, but I wanna redo it. I love the way the eye looked, but we're gonna do one with a slightly different color scheme for the thumb because I really wanna do green because I was wanting to do sort of green with these ones. And also I never showed you guys how these ones turned out, but these were the ones that, that I airbrushed with just like the regular paint. So it does look like it could absolutely work, but it would need a lot of coats and that might take a lot of time with that method. And it did sort of pool a lot, especially with like this one. So let's work on this nail. I'm gonna start with this Lime Green by Kira Sky. And this one is a bit thinner, which I think will be good for this. Cause I mean, it'll, oh, you guys cannot even see. I hope it doesn't look like that on camera. Cause on camera, you can't even see what's happening. I feel like some weird effect is happening with the camera and the green. What it looks like in person is just all the details are in a bit of darker green. Okay, I have a picture of how this looks to me. Cause right now it's just looking like a green screen or something, like, hello? Okay, next I'm gonna use some of this cat's eye gel from Model Ones. I'm just gonna paint everything except kind of like around the crack so it's like a little bit more defined for the scales or would it be like skin texture? I guess I don't know the terminology for dragons. I don't know exactly if this will look a certain way once we do the cat's eye effect, but it might be cool. It might just be some shimmer. Okay, so I don't know if this is gonna do that much with the, uh... oh, you can see it. Ooh, I was a little worried that it wasn't gonna do like anything with such a small amount, but it does look like it is. Cause I would like almost like little stripes within the little dots, do you know what I mean? So this is what we have. I am gonna do white on the eye, even though I'm gonna pretty much make the whole um, iris take up most of the eye. I just want a clear, path for me to go over. We'll use this green, like reflective green for the eye. There we go. It's like just a little bit of the white showing. Pretty. Okay, I think I'm gonna add some gold in the eye. I think that will be very pretty. Now I'm gonna do the pupil. Hopefully you'll still be able to see it. You might, I think you will. Okay, yeah, you can see that. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and do some of the reflective edges on the horns so they stick out because otherwise you can't really see them and then sort of do a couple i think small details like around the eye and stuff i suppose now we should probably put these on we got our two sets here i'm gonna put the skull side on my left hand because i show my right hand the most so i want this set because this is actually really like this one's good that one's something else what is it i don't know just clean the insides with alcohol. Get that sticky stuff that holds them down off. All right, so let's put the star of the show on. I'm just gonna put just some glue on my actual nail. These I feel like are actually really flat for nails. And so if you have flatter nail beds, they should fit well. Like you should not need much glue at all. Man, I'm going to the mall tomorrow and someone's gonna be like, oh my God, let me see your nails. And I'm gonna be like, here you go. It's fine, I'm fine. Obviously I am doing great. Oh no. Okay, my face cam camera died. I will give it that they do fit my nails really nice. I mean, they do look kind of cool. They would look cool even just all one color. Alrighty, and we have them on. They do honestly seem a bit bulky. Like, 
I don't know, it's so weird. Like this almost looks like it's too big for my nail, but it actually fits perfectly. Do you see what I mean? Like it almost looks too big, but they actually fit like great. They are pretty bulky and they're a little heavy, but they're nothing I don't think that anyone couldn't handle. I feel like they almost give off like a shadow on this one. I don't know. I feel like these ones are actually definitely my favorite. I like this one also. The tip before I put anything on, I also really like. So it was a few days that I had these nails on, no breaking, no chipping, no anything. And then I took a pretty long, hot shower. <laughs> I was sitting on my couch an hour and a half after, and I noticed that one of the nails was like bending upwards. And I was like, that's so weird. What is it doing? And I was like, because of course, you know, after that, I want to investigate. So I'm like, mm, I wonder if it just like, what is it doing? So I pushed it up a little bit more and they were bendy. I don't know what caused them to do that. I'm assuming it was like hot water for a while. And then of course, I'm going to mess with the rest of them afterwards. So then I was like, I wonder if the others can do that. And the rest of them were also bendy. So they were like sloping up. And then when I just like pushed one of the tips downwards to see if it would like slope downwards, it basically just like bent. I'm assuming it was the hot water for a while, but while I was messing with them, I broke one. And these aren't really nails that you can repair super easily or redo another one super quickly. So I did take them off. When I took them off with the acetone, they did eventually just sort of peel off, but it did definitely take some soaking and they definitely did not dissolve whatsoever. Not that they said they would. And I thought it was just really weird after it had been a while since I got out of the shower, like a full hour and a half. And that's when I even just noticed that they were kind of doing that. On the website, it does say to treat them like jewels, but I've never had nails bend upwards. I've definitely had them bend, you know, downwards. Sometimes if you do full cover tips, don't put any gel on them or something, they can bend, it happens. But I've never had any bend upwards so i just wanted to update with that and that i took them off because one broke and one was like almost kind of staying upwards and that would annoy me to no end so i did take them off and there won't be any further updates on how long they last i also forgot to film an outro but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a like it helps me out a ton i really appreciate it and i will hopefully see you next time bye